Once known as the Temple of Aeonir, the Temple of the Sacred Seal was hidden away in the Blackheart jungle, unseen by Troll or Greenskin for many, many moons. After the Moonkin were so viciously attacked, they made the temple their unlikely home, while Chief Tanakrog did whatever it took to keep the faint hope of survival alive. Akrog is listening. No. Chieftain Cabrax, Akrog welcomes him to the Moonkin's strange new home. Strange indeed, Chieftain Akrog. Cabrax senses much evil here. He tastes corruption in the air. Pah. The Moonkin has no intention of lingering here for longer than needed, but it is the best place for them to be right now. The best place, or the only place? <laughs> they must lead the Bonekin and the Moonkin away from this temple of despair. The sooner the better. The corruption Cabrax consents will destroy the trolls if they stay too long. There is no value in hiding here forever. Akrog can sense it too. It feels like it is growing. But the trolls must stay here until they are ready to fight back. Akrog can only hope that his tribe suffers less here than they would out in the open. Then Cabrax hopes they will be ready very soon. Oh, and one more thing. About the Moonkin wounded and the rot victims. Cabrax might have an idea how to help them. <sighs> it is true. Crab dung. That was... a strange joke, even for Zazka's mind. <laughs> it sounds like it, no? Cabrax is not jesting at all. Crab dung extract is one of the most powerful herbal remedies known to the Bonekin. And while it is true that it not always smells nice, it has kept them hale and strong for many hundred moons. Akrog should go and find some crab dung when they march again on their quest for echoes, or whatever they call them. It will help. Hmm. All right. It is worth a thought. Knows Cabrax where they can find crab dung? Well, crabs are everywhere. But Cabrax knows of a place with lots of colonies. The Cobalt Coast. A couple of brittle bones have made their tribe camp there, so perhaps Akrog could crush them while he's at it. <laughs> All right. Akrog will see if the Moonkin can make time. First and foremost, they must focus on resurrecting the cub. Hmm. About that. Is Akrog really sure? Even if they manage to resurrect that beast, how knows he it will fight for the trolls? Frankly, Akrog knows not. But he knows that it is their only choice. <laughs> fair point, Akrog. Fair point. So, Chieftain Cabrax and the Bonekin have been through a lot. Are they recovering? <sighs> By the Holy Hide, it has been tough. Tough! Cabrax believed Mugwa could see him through any ordeal, but these last few moons have tested him and his tribe. Cabrax hopes Mugwa will reward her trolls with some peace. At last. <sighs> If the Bonekin want peace, Akrog is not sure they came to the right place. Cabrax understands. But peace takes many forms, Chieftain Akrog. When those cursed Greenskins tried to shame Cabrax, he found the peace of Mugwar inside his mind. They treated Cabrax and his tribe like beasts. The Bonekin were filthy, starving, exhausted. Only our inner peace saved us from becoming beasts. <sighs> That is an interesting and strange way to see it. <laughs> Not strange at all. The path of a chieftain is never clear, but Cabrax has some help. Whenever he is in doubt, Cabrax consults the bones. They tell him which path to take through the power of Mugwa. And what told the bones, Chieftain Cabrax, when he was trapped by the Greenskins? That Cabrax need not fear. And by the Holy Hide, 
That was all he needed to know. Those bones Chieftain Cabrax wears, can they tell him the future? Not in the way that Chieftain Akrog might be thinking. When Cabrax throws the bones and reads their patterns, they do not show him exactly what is to come. No. Instead, they help Cabrax decide which of the paths that lay before him is the right one for the Bonekin. Such guidance sounds valuable enough. How reads Cabrax the patterns? It is hard to explain to an outsider. Cabrax spent many, many moons studying the power of these bones. If Cabrax were to throw them now, Chieftain Akrog would just see a mess on the ground. Cabrax would see a face, a weapon, or maybe an iron beak. These symbols hold great meaning for the Bonekin. All right, Akrog must ask. With so much wisdom at their fingertips, how have the Bonekin ended up like this? <laughs> Such a question by the Holy Hide. Ah, the wisdom to follow the right path is a true gift. But the right path leads not always to happiness and freedom. The Bonekin walk the path that Mogwa has chosen for them, wherever it may lead. And Cabrax can only consult the Bones about the choices he knows he has to make. The future holds surprises for us all, even the Bonekin. Why was Mugwa's cradle the Bonekin's home? It is such a sacred place. The chieftain thinks it was wrong to live in such a place? But he knows as well as Cabrax that Urgarth offers little welcome to a tribe of trolls in these times. By the Holy Hide, their choices are few. That is right enough. But why Mugwa's cradle? The Bonekin have a solemn duty to serve Mugwa. It is her will that they protect her shrine, and treat it with the respect it deserves. Have the Bonekin never questioned Chieftain Cabrax? Akrog would not blame them for being afraid of bringing enemies to a sacred place. By the Holy Hide, of course! The faith of the Bonekin runs deep, and many have been worried for the safety of the shrine. When Cabrax explained how Mugwa had brought the tribe to that place, they became calm. If it is the will of Mugwa that the time of trolls is coming to an end, so be it. The Bonekin have made their peace with that. Most of them, anyway. It is tempting to stop fighting and let the Moonkin have a few days of joy, if the end really is upon them. Ah, but would the Moonkin allow Chieftain Akrog to stop? Cabrax thinks not. The Moonkin have not the same faith in Mugwa as the Bonekin. They will keep following Chieftain Akrog, even if it means they will suffer and grieve. Hmm. Perhaps Chieftain Cabrax speaks the truth. Akrog wishes he could offer his tribe a better choice than pain or destruction. Chieftains bear a heavy burden. Cabrax wishes strength and wisdom for Chieftain Akrog. Is there any advice Cabrax would like to give Akrog? Advice? <laughs> there is something. But Cabrax is not sure Akrog wants to hear it. Speak true. Very well. Akrog should consider carefully who and what he trusts. The way of the Bonekin may seem mysterious to Chieftain Akrog, but Cabrax believes it is far more reliable than following the advice of any brittle bone, and more reliable than trusting the mind of a single troll. The minds of trolls are weak without the guidance of Mogwa. The minds of Brittlebones are corrupt and filled with lies.
So what suggests Cabrax? That Akrog puts all his faith into the bones? Cabrax can only offer. Akrog is the one who decides. Hmm. Well, you will think about Cabrax's words. It is quite something to see the Bonekin in battle. So... resourceful. Resourceful? <laughs> it is true! The Bonekin let nothing go to waste. The blood of the dead and dying gives his tribe the strength of mind to keep on fighting, even when things look bleak. Sharpens their minds. Much like it sharpens Cabrax's reading of the bones. Hmm. Well, Akrog must leave Cabrax for now. There is much to be done. Of course. Of course! This looks interesting. What is his troll ship's command? Look, Akrog found more of those stone tablets. Can the pig and his same blood make use of them? Thanks to my genius, I most certainly can. These schematics require rare materials, but I'm certain the resulting creation will be worth it. Impale ten brittle bones with one throw worth it? Oh, why must you always be so barbaric? There are so many beautiful things Metallurgy can create. But yes, they will be quite effective in armed conflict. Now, is there anything else? Akrok needs something from them. If they can stop arguing for a moment. Well, I'm good to go. It's Wilbur who just won't stop howling. Or squeaking, that is. <clears throat> oh, how incredibly amusing, Arthur. What do you need, Sir Troll? that one of the bonekin tribe no it is true chieftain akrok palag is grateful to be here palag seems a little more relaxed than his kin were when akrog found them mm. ah they must have been filled with the blood sight at the time the blood sight mm. that makes sense palag hopes the chieftain thought not that his kin were being rude far from it akrog was impressed by their focus it is a blessing from Mugwar. Can Palag help the chieftain with something? So, is it true that Palag drinks blood before fighting his enemies? Mm. Palag drinks the blood, it is true. It fills him with the power of blood sight. It helps him kill many more enemies. Akrog is curious. How feels Palak when he goes into battle with that power? How feels it? 
Alag is not sure if he can describe the full truth of it. Perhaps one day the chieftain will experience it for himself. Krog admits he is curious. The idea of letting his body be taken over by such holy powers is a little frightening, and yet, would it make Akrog a better warrior? Palag hears that the chieftain is already a strong and clever warrior, so it is hard to say. The blood sight completely empties the Troll's mind, so he can focus solely on victory. No feelings of doubt or fear. Pala cannot usually remember the battle afterwards, and it takes a long time for him to notice any wounds. It is... freeing. Perhaps if Akrog was not chieftain, he would take the chance. But the time for such freedom has passed. Hmm. The Moonkin needs Akrog to be in control, and he will do his duty. It is a shame. But Palag knows what the Chieftain has promised to his tribe. Every troll has his own duty. But maybe, some moons from now, when the trolls have won their freedom, the Chieftain can take a day off from duty. Hmm. Such freedom is worth striving for. All trolls need a dream like that. May it not be a dream for long, if Mugwar is willing. Akrog was wondering, whose blood do the Bonekin drink? There are a few trolls in Palag's tribe who have been chosen by Mugwar as vessels. Those trolls offer up their blood whenever Palag and the other warriors need it. The Bonekin's warriors are grateful for any blood they can get, but the truest blood sight comes from the blood of the newly dead. Even if the dead suffer with a blood rot? The Bonekin suffer not from the blood rot, Mugwar be praised. But he wonders if only Palag could taste the blood of Noag, the moon blood. No drop of Noag's blood will be spilled. Little blood is too important to... to the Moonkin, to all trolls. Chieftain, his blood would not go to waste. Far from it. The blood sight from Noag could be just what the Moonkin and Bonekin trolls need to defeat their enemies. If Palak could just try a drop or two, Palak will stay away from Little Blood. Akrog swore to keep him safe, and he will honor his promise. Palak and his fellow warriors will have to find another way, as the chieftain wishes. Palak hopes he will not regret his choice. Akrog must apologize to Palag, to all the trolls in his tribe. Akrog feels he brought the enemy into the home of the Bonekin. Palag cannot speak for every Bonekin, but he blames not the Chieftain. It was a time of great sadness for the Moonkin, and Palag knows how such rituals can lessen the pain of loss and despair. The Chieftain had no choice. Perhaps Palag is right. But Akrog still feels a heavy guilt. Did Palag suffer greatly at the hands of the Greenskins? Hmm. Not as much as the others. Palag stayed calm, spent the time in silent prayer, resisted the urge to crush his guards. It would only have made things worse for the other Bonekin. Such quiet strength also has great value. Akrog is glad that Palag came with the Moonkin. They are safer together. Palag hopes his tribe made the right decision. Maybe he should have gone after those filthy greenskins. But he should not give in to anger. Palag may yet get his chance for revenge. For now, he should be patient. Palag will try his best. But he can only pray for so long. It is time for Akrog to go. Palag thanks the Chieftain for talking with him.
what is needed of him. But the, uh, chieftain, good of him to come by. And look, here they find more pieces of cub? An arm, it is true. How is Anuk? Still alive. That is something, he guess. Anuk want to speak to Chieftain, because he have idea about how they can find more food for their kin. Akrog thanks the Eye Master. He must go. Stay safe, Chieftain. What Chieftain? Is? How can Grunwa help? Akrog has some bone dust for Grungwar's plant. Hmm. Grungwar was about to ask. He saw Akrog collect it. Hmm. This helps. Very good. It make no hex sound. No. But it will. They just need more of it. Hmm. That is it for now. Akrog must go. Of course. Duty awaits. Big blood. He needs something? That is all for now. Let them march on. Hmm. By Grumakwa's sparkling udders, the chieftain deems the small tusk worthy of a conversation. How can Zaska help? Akrog has to go. Zaska will not stop him. Let Zaska get a proper look. Warm sand beneath their feet, clear blue water lapping at the shore, palm leaves whispering in the gentle breeze. Any troll could be fooled into thinking that place was paradise on Urgath, but he would not be fooled for long. Pretty. So much sun. And even more enemies. Those brittle bones Cabrak spoke of are no elves or humans, chieftain. They are dark elves, probably from Shaldun. They must be careful. Ah, just aim for the head. They crack all the same. Anything trusted one wants to say? Or can they start fighting? And, um, collecting dung?
The eyes said the brittle bones had towers, no? True, and they are deadly. They will need to fight carefully, Akrog. Maybe they make Mugwa's cub appear, like a devouring. Hmm. That is a good idea, actually. Well, Akrog still wonders if Cabrax is making a fool out of them. Crab dung. Grungwa thought the same thing, but then he spoke to Crumb. It is true, crab dung extract is a powerful herbal remedy. But it cannot cure the rot, can it? No, only numb the pain. But still, the kin will be grateful. But only after Cabrax and Crumb have explained to them why in the world they are rubbing shit on their hides. Oh well. Anything for the tribe. That is all. Time for battle. The workers will build the camp, while Akrog, Zazka, Grungwar, and Noag will look for the dung. Akrog has spoken. That would have sounded a lot more chieftainish without the sentence before it. <laughs> Quiet, small tusk. All right, all right. Can Zazka help? Moving on. The building is done. Going now. He might be old, but his talents are still sharp. These Dark Elves really love their Erics, no? Destroy them! 
Efficient here. The tribe learned something new. He can help. Magua plays. If he insists, he is going. Moving on. Let Zoska get a proper look. That way. Going now. Time to move on. Moving now. He crushed them now! Take Beetle done? land grows. This looks interesting. What is this? Mm. He is on his way. Head towards certain doom. Sure, why he not? will lead the way. That way. For the moon, kid! Thank <laughs> you. 
not get away from Zaska. No one here. What next? Tribe is running out of stuff. <laughs> they will regret this. Feel the might of the Magma. Man their flesh. Can a troll not rest for a moment? He is going. He go there. Going now. He moving. He will lead the way. Chieftain, the tribe is running out of stone. Ready for action. Not smash! Moving now. Let Zazka get a proper look. May Magua guide his hands. Afraid of an old troll? They should be. Zazga is listening. Only fools challenge the Moon King. They messed with the wrong tribe. He will protect the tribe. Even the world would not eat such a beast. What on Urgath is this?
is running out of stone. What can he do for the tribe? Grungwa will go there. Interesting. Probably a building is done. You find out. Chieftain, the tribe learned something new. He is what going. Now? More trouble? In that direction? Head towards certain doom? Sure, why not? Here go there. Why must they plague the moon again? Krog is ready. Huh. What is that? is running out of stone. The tribe needs more wood, 
Chieftain. Work, work, work. Can Zaska help? You find out. On his way. The building is done. This way? Going now. That way. Moving on. Let's go. Uh, this altar has a lot of hex power. Grungwa could try to channel it. feels uh, fast, like a viper. Grongwa will go there. Huh. What is that? is running out of stone.
If he insists. Be ready. His trolls are going hungry. They need more food. Interesting. Probably. Let Akrog see. Take care of it. He not worry. I broke his ready. They will rot it. They have a titan too. Ugly thing.
Interesting. Probably. What is this? This it? <laughs> hmm. Smell just like normal dung. He is on his way. In that direction? Let's not get a proper look. He is on his way. Let our crog see. What this? He is going. Take care of it. Be not worried. Huh? No orders? Get ready. <clears throat> he here. Saska help. What next? He ready. Can a troll not rest for a moment? At his service. A Krog is listening. May 
Mugvar bless this meal. What is this? Fascinating. This is not a dark elf temple. Grangwa wonders who built it. They can wander after the battle. Interesting. Probably. Mm. is needed of him. What now?
Onuka's cub. So strong. The blood for the tribe! Destroy them! There it is. Tusks, is it not glorious? Magua has blessed the Moonkin with growth. The eye of the tribe sees. The tribe's land grows. Attack Roxy. Huh, what now? More trouble? He go there. Zaska is listening. Frog is ready. No orders? 
Troll not rest for a moment. Let Zazka get a proper look. What All is? right. Grangwa thinks this should be enough. He is sure. No, but that is all the workers will be willing to carry. It should help the rot victims a lot. At least for a while. Time to head home then? Mm. Time to head on. They have the dung they wanted. Ugh. Ugh. Take care of it. Be not worried. Be work now. Mugwort praise. certain doom. Sure, why not? He is on his way. 